Hey guys, Ryan Feathers Elite Pigeon Auctions. I am here with the one and only Emil Dennis of Belgium. You see the two beautiful golden wings in front of us. It's an absolute pleasure to be here with you, Emil. Let me ask you, you've been in pigeon sport since you were seven. Yes, yeah. How much has this sport changed? Well, of course, in every sport there is an evolution. So always try to breed better, or to improve, always try to technically manage them better. In the meantime, the uh, products improve, although uh, I don't believe too much in it, but you have more chances uh, now with products, they study more, so the performances are higher, the races are faster, so... Now, question, do you think the pigeons uh, from, you know, in the 60s and the 70s, were they better pigeons than the pigeons today? No, I wouldn't think so. Uh, I wouldn't say they, they were better, but they were also good, but the treatment was different. Uh, that, that was it. No, the pigeons were also were good that time, but they, now the pigeons are also very good. Uh, Maybe a little tougher back then? I would yes, say. Yeah, a little tougher. Now, they, they're, now they're a bit quicker? They, yeah, they, they are all try to make them faster, you know. Uh, although, if then the weather is against them, all these fast pigeons fall out. And it becomes, it becomes a, 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 a very... Uh, <laughs> disheartening race yes because they've been built these pigeons on so much speed and yes. when the weather's not right it doesn't go uh, Espe especially I see in one loft racing you must have the very hard pigeons because there is always one maybe not the final race but there is always one or two races in between that are very tough if this fast pigeons knock on these very hard races maybe they, they still come home but they are worn out and then the strong pigeons come home or come back and are still fresh to start on the next on the final race this is uh, this is interesting because you were always a, a long distance flyer. You did not race young pigeons to win. You, you you used the young pigeons to set yourself up for future seasons. Yes, yes. When you first started racing one loft races, did you think in your mind, oh, I have to go get different pigeons? Yes, I thought so in the beginning. I thought my pigeon because I thought. The fa usually the final race is about 500. You have ex exceptions like the super final in Sevilla here, the fourth prize, 620. But um, I thought I needed pigeons for 500 kilometers. But this is a different 500 kilometer racing at home than racing in the one loft race. Because usually the terrain is different. Here, here 500 kilometers in Belgium is all flat, no mountain, but in many uh, one loft races it is all mountain or a part is mountain, it's more tough and the flying time is longer. So you have pigeons can fly 5 hours, you can pigeons can fly 7 hours, you can pigeons have 10 hours and more, but there is a, a lot of limit at 10 hours. And then the pigeons, uh, different pigeons. Different pigeons. Yes, yes. So, uh, you, you, you thought, I'm going to first try with my own pigeons. Yes, I tried everything. And how did it work? Well, it worked out very well. But it were mainly the same lines, successful means able to fly this. So, and from this, so I started one loft racing the first time in 2003 in Spain, uh, in Catalonia. So I win the first time I win, there were only three pigeons home in time. I won the first prize. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way to start, isn't it? Yes. The second year I started in, I participated in Thailand for the first time. So I won number four. 
So I, I was surprised again, but it, Thailand can be very hard because it's once the pigeons have to come home after 12 o'clock in the afternoon is too hot. Until 12 o'clock it's okay, but in the afternoon they suffer a lot from the heat. 37, 38 degrees. So then in 2005 I co participate again in Thailand, but it was a complete disaster. No pigeon came home, came back. So then in 2006, because in 2006 was for me a special year. It was my 60th anniversary. And then I lost two of my main customers in the Far East. One was Mr. Uemura, the president of Japan, also president of the Asian Federation. He passed away a few months before. Also then I cooperated with David Lin from Taiwan and we Co uh, cooperated in China together, same fall. He, he, fall, he, he also lost his life in, in a couple of months before my 60th anniversary. So I lost my main buyers. So I was thinking, will I continue to work or not? Because many people now are 60 years, stop working, go on pension or retire. So, but my brother say you are too young, too good, you better continue. Then I started to make a new tour in the Far East. My first drop was at the final race uh, in Thailand, in Bangkok. One hour later, I went to my hotel. One hour later, they called me, you win the Princess Cup. This was beyond my beliefs. I never expected with my long distance pigeons I could win the Princess Cup in Thailand. 580 kilometers it was at that time from Chiang Mai. In the meantime, I have won myself three times the Princess Cup in Thailand. Wim Kerkhoven, my loft manager with the same pigeons, also won it one time. Different King's Cup winners in Thailand are with my pigeons. So I was convinced they are successful. Now think about it, you didn't start with a one loft pigeon, you didn't go out and buy a one loft winner, you went and in your your yard, yes. out of these Barcelona pigeons and these national pigeons, your own homegrown talent, yes. you went to work with them, yes. and you want to know what I believe, and maybe I'm wrong, but when you have pigeons that are flying international races, Barcelona, Golden Wing winners, you have these style of pigeon, you can literally take them anywhere yeah. and compete because they are on a level, on a class, that is higher than most one-off entrants. Yes, it's true, it's true. It's so true. it's almost like the, your own secret weapon yes. was all those years of work, Yes. figuring out what pigeons work in the distances. And ladies and gentlemen, right here is a man his own talent, his own hard work, he gets the results from his pigeons. Long distance, middle distance sprint. If you have the right pigeons with that little bit of extra, you can make it work. You don't have to get crazy and, 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 and buy the fads. Buy the pigeons that win, I say, and this man's pigeons win. This is another question. Since you've been flying since 2003 in one loft racing, you've seen a lot of one loft races, the ups, the downs, the highs and lows. And if you were to make a perfect one loft race, okay, what would you like to see some good things in a one loft race that you haven't seen yet? The accommodation, but in many places the accommodation is very good. Uh, I cannot say, I have not visited too many one lofts I participate. Uh, I think many one lofts are okay. Pigeons must have enough space. This important. Also important is that the pigeons, that there are enough trainings. Enough trainings. So enough. What, do you, what do you think is enough trainings? Depending, say you have a country like Thailand, you cannot exercise the pigeons there around the loft because it's too hot. Uh, very, very fast they come down. So they only have exercise for maybe 10 minutes or 15 minutes. This is no good. Then, in this case, they make them train every two days, 100 kilometers about. 100 kilometers, yes. 
every two days. So they come home, have a rest, then next day again, in, in order to, to give them the necessary exercise. And in training, do you think they need 20 training flights, 30 training flights, 50 training flights? What would you think is a good number? Between 30, it is depending, between 20 and 40. 20 and 40, yeah. and a minimum of six, uh, 100 kilometers. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, a little longer the odd time, a little shorter is okay. Yes. But give them it's a depending proper... Depending on the lo location, uh, the liberation location. Right? Okay, and if you were to say for a final race, what do you think is the magic number of kilometers? 500. That's the number, not six. Well, this is. What would I, you prefer? Well, well, your I, perfect one. No, well, I no, I'm saying, I am focused on 500 for a final race. 600 or 650 we already have now. This is the super final. So you like both of them? Yes, I like both of so, them. So, but so you're saying? I I prefer five and 650. Because now I mainly choose one of the races that have the super final extra. The encore, the bonus. Yes. Another question, in one loft races, do you prefer Cox or Hens descent? Well, what I see is that mainly Hens win. Although I cannot complain, in the last season I had three real top birds. Number two in Costa de la Luz, he is a cock. I had number three in Derby Mediterraneo, also a cock. I had number six in the winter race, 480 kilometer, uh, also a cock. So, so there like is no strict rules, but I see majority are hands. This is also here in young bird racing. Majority are hands. Uh, say if you take majority of the top 10 or the top 20 positions, hands. And why do you think it is? Because a hen is quickly matured. Quickly or matured. I guess the same like people. Yes, it's because the body is generally smaller and uh, quickly matured. So there. Simple questions with Emil Denny's. A lot of common sense. Uh, the pigeon sport in, in, in the last 60 years, you've been through it here in Belgium. Is it changing for the better or the worse? What do you think? Well, for me, uh, before in Belgium, it was more a social event. Uh, now it's more professional. Say, a lot of amateurs have fallen out. There were many before. So they went to the club to have a beer. So they had a good reason bringing the pigeons to the club. So it was a good chance to have a beer or beers. Beers. Yes, you know, uh, now this is over. Very few. I still go to have a few beers with the friends, but uh, this no more like before. Before every uh, basketing day was a party. But this is finished. It's finished. It's finished. Not the same anymore. Not the same anymore. And how do you find the, now that it's getting more professional, do you find the pigeon men are as nice? Or as easy to work with? Or uh, do you think it's different? This is about the same. This is about the same. That's the same. Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, la you miss the parties a little bit. I miss the parties, you know. Uh, you know, I miss the parties. Yeah. Uh, it's a little different atmosphere to go out and experience this. Yes. We, we sit here and we look at the trophies and everything. And it's, you know, it's hard to believe that you could have, that one man could accomplish so much of this. How did you do it all? What do you think, what, what was the driving force or what was the, did you get some type of encouragement or how, what was it? What made you go to work every day with this? Yes, well, it, it's, it's a very, it's very fascinating because you, I think it's like a piece of art. You create it yourself. You create your own pigeons. You manage your own pigeons. So you create your own success. And that's it? That's it. And, and you, you, you're constantly always looking to bring in a pigeon that is the right one with, with, a, with a super result. Yes. You want resulted pigeons. Only top birds number one or very top birds. And in your life, I'm sure you've brought in more than enough of these top ones. Have you found that the super racers, the really, really cream of the crop, 
that they normally turn out to produce good pigeons? Y yes, but mainly in grandchildren. So it normally will skip a generation? Yes, you skip a generation. Very often, I say there is no fixed rules, but very often by the daughters. If it is a cock, by the daughters. So for instance, we can talk about the tea, for instance, he, he won everything, he was the super, in now hindsight, you could say, well, if he doesn't breed me winners right off the bat, I'm going to look to his daughters. His daughters should breed me the good ones. Yes, but from the tea, I had two exceptional... I cannot speak for the ones now, but uh, when I look back, we had two exceptional breeders. This was the old Remy Stickleboat that we bought, and the tea. You could pair them up to any hen, the children were always the first. Always the first. Whether to any hen, whether cock or hen. So the quality was super. And in your lifetime, how many true supers, like, like right now we could say, snap our fingers and you would get these one or two pigeons back as a two-year-old or as a three-year-old. What two would you want back or three would you want back or how many have you had that have been that special? Well, uh, not too many. So, well, we had the vector there. This was, our, say, after the war. The, well, no, after the war, they had the copy. This was a very a super one. We always remember the name. Then we had the Vechter, the first national from Limoges, 90, scored 19 times in national races. Uh, this, then we had the Blexum, this one number one from national from St. Vincent, he won number three national from St. Vincent, he won number five national from Brieve, number ten national Cahor, number eleven national St. Vincent, incredible. We had then the blue one my grandfather is holding is the Zetter, he won the first national Cahor, he won also the first in a provincial race, a very fast race, 1,700. So, and he won the fifth national car, next generation. Then we had the Prince. The Prince was uh, the first national ass pigeon KBDB, 1974. He also won first international Narbonne, 1974. Next one was T. T, T, well, we all know about the T. <laughs> so you had, basically what you said, just right there, you had super pigeons, like... All, all the time. All, all the time. Yeah. And you know, I'm going to show this photo, because you were talking about it, <clears throat> and I will put it in front of the camera so everyone can see it. But this photo right here, this is exactly what you were just talking about. There's your grandfather, your father, and there's yourself. Self, yes. And all three of these pigeons were national winners? Were national winners. As were super pigeons were national winners. They breed good ones? Breed good ones. So guys, you see it in this picture. This is history here. Real history. History of pigeon sport here in Belgium. A true long distance family. I don't know if we this can- pic This picture is 1970. 1970. And I oh, 71, 71. 71. Before we wrap this up, Emil, this has been a great, uh, a great time. Your father and grandfather aren't here today. What do you think they would think today of you now? I don't know. Uh, I must thank my father and grandfather because right from the beginning they believed in me they give me the chance to develop my own minds about the pigeon sport. They let me make the pairs, so many were no good, but I found that I have always been very good in making good breeding pairs. This was my strength. But this is because right from the beginning, when I was 16 years old, they let me pair up the pigeons. So it gave me the chance to learn, to study. Uh, we only remember the good ones, we only remember the good times. <laughs> well, on that note, I'm going to say, Emil, I want to thank you very much for allowing me to your home. I want to thank you very much for allowing Feathers Elite to represent your pigeons. 
And uh, I want you to keep going and keep winning. Because remember, when you're 120, we'll still be working together. <laughs> yes. We're going to have fun. This is for sure. This is for sure. This is for sure. You're the man. Yeah. Thank you very much. That's Emil Denny's. I'm Ryan Feathers Elite Pigeon Auctions. The one and only. The Golden Wings. The Golden Man. Super Pigeon Man. Super Human Being. Emil, thank you.